When you think of a beginner programming project, what do you think of? A fancy calculator? A fun mobile app? How about a chess robot? Maybe this could spice up my LinkedIn page, you might be thinking to yourself. Well, we're not doing anything like that in this video. We're diving straight into the pits of hell. In this video, I'm going to walk you through step-by-step -step on how to build a web scraper that scrapes stable diffusion images off of 4chan, and why you'd want to do that in the first place. I'll also be showing you how I used ChatGPT to make the development of this way easier, so keep watching for that. With that out of the way, let's begin. Okay, let's define exactly what the problem statement is. If you've seen my previous Python video, you know that practically all of the metadata required to recreate a stable diffusion image is stored in the PNG chunks themselves. The problem is that when you upload your PNG to the vast majority of image hosting sites such as Reddit, Imager, or 4chan, all of that metadata gets deleted. To get around this, users on 4chan who want to share their art with others while including the metadata use a different web hosting service, specifically Catbox. They simply post a link as a message on the relevant thread. It's anonymous, quick and dirty, which makes it a prime target for web scraping. That means we're going to have three main steps to this code. First, we need to figure out what threads we're going to scrape off of. Next, we need to figure out how to extract the links off of the page. And last, we need to download the images themselves. So, what exactly are we scraping? To zoom out a bit, currently throughout 4chan, there's at least six different boards that all have their own ongoing threads dedicated to AI images. The threads are well organized and all have specific titles for each thread, which we're going to use to narrow down our search with Python. What board you want to mine is up to you. Just remember, you are mining 4chan, so be careful. My first approach was to modify the URL fragments so that we could search for the board we want to, and then kind of just inspect the HTML that way, right? So go through the HTML, find the threads we want to mine, and loop through the necessary boards. I spent quite a lot of time doing this until after a bit of Googling, I found out that 4chan actually has an API. Without the API, this code would have been far more complicated and difficult. The API will allow us to systematically go through all the boards and tags and threads and systematically pick what we want to go through. Navigating through the API, we can use this section called catalog.json to filter out exactly what we're looking for. And there we have it, everything we need to find what threads we're going to scrape. We just need to filter through this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this JSON and use a website called jsonformatter.org to make things a bit more readable and clear to understand. Okay, we found what we're looking for, the thread name as well as the number associated with it. And now it's time to start writing Python. And here's our start. First, we define the board variable outside to make it easier to change in the future. So you can basically select which board you want to mine. Next is the header. The header in this instance is basically just a little string that you attach that tells the server, hey, I'm totally not a web scraper. I'm actually coming from some guy with his laptop using Safari or whatever. And then the server's like, oh, okay, you can proceed. If you don't do that, sometimes you can get blocked for being a web scraper. So in this instance, it didn't make a difference, but it's a good habit to have a header to begin with. After that, we make a request to download the entire JSON file, and we store it to the variable catalog. Then we define an empty list for the post numbers. And now things are going to get interesting. We're going to loop through the entire catalog, and anywhere we find a sub that matches the text that we're looking for, we're going to find the post number associated with it and add it to the list prior. Now, the last section of this code is to take the board we selected and a thread number, and combine it into one actual usable URL, turn that into a list, and now we have a list of all the URLs we're going to scrape. We got all that done with not that much Python, but it did take a little bit of time to figure out what exactly we were going to do. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, or you have suggestions for the code, or how I'm pacing things, or whatever, please leave a comment. I'm reading everything, and I would love to know what you think. All right, so now we have the links in question, how do we extract the links off of the individual threads? Well, we're actually going to use a similar approach. We're going to take the entire page, turn it into one long string of HTML, and then go through it character by character until it finds the part that we're looking for. However, things are a little bit different now because the catbox strings are not the same every time. Looking through the links, they seem to follow a pattern of something something, six random letters or numbers, and .png. So you know what that means. It's time for regex. Now this is the perfect opportunity to use ChatGPT 
because I'd rather stab myself than write regex. And ChatGPT is decent at doing stuff like regex. The more information you give it, the more accurately it can respond to you. And even if it is wrong, if you explain to ChatGPT why, it can fix it for you. Also, I do need to confess, I got ChatGPT to write a large amount of the code in this entire project, but I was able to do that by carefully planning exactly what I needed to do, telling it line by line in granular detail how we're going to go through the JSON file, how we're going to store everything, etc, etc. That's essentially it for this section. The only other bits of code are just variables for the counter and the timer, which I found to be useful for debugging, which I will get into in a minute. And now for the fun stuff. We're going to be using beautiful soup to parse this HTML. Uh, actually, wait, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Let me ask ChatGPT because I kind of forgot. Uh, we are not using the beautiful soup library for this bit of code. Okay, this part of the code has two loops. For a helpful illustration, check out this GIF. The outside loop is going through all of the threads one by one, finding all of the links and putting them in a list. The inside loop is taking that list and going one by one, downloading the images. And within that loop, there's one more branch, but that's just to catch any errors that go wrong. If we actually take the response variable and print it, you can actually see that it's literally the entire site, every single bit of HTML converted into one long string, which is kind of crazy that you can turn a website into basically just a really long string of text, but it works. So then we essentially go through the same process as we went before and we search for what we're looking for. Now, this technique is a bit crude, but for a website that's super old fashioned, like 4chan, this works really, really well. Now, at this point of the code, I actually started to wonder, would it be faster if we used beautiful soup to speed up the web scraping process? What beautiful, beautiful soup will do is it'll essentially allow us to find only the HTML tags that we're looking for. And then we could tell the request library, hey, just search these specific sections of the website. So instead of searching through the entire website, it just searches through the specific sections we're looking for. But then I thought about it more and I realized that really doesn't make sense because what we're doing is we're actually searching through the entire website and then searching it through again, but we have like indexes now. Now I don't actually have a CS degree, so I only really know the basics of algorithms and whatnot, so I wasn't able to come up with some sort of mathematical solution, but I did a trial and error test. I got ChatGPT to write a few more lines that would implement the beautiful soup solution. That is a really funny sentence. And then I just ran a test with 114 images. And here is the results of the test. It looks like the original function is actually a bit quicker, which actually does make sense with what we were just talking about. Now, the main question, is this significant? In the grand scheme of the universe, no, I'm writing code to raise how fast I can download AI-generated anime girls from one of the most controversial websites on the planet. But is it mathematically significant? Also, I don't really know. I sucked at statistics. Uh... And it honestly doesn't matter. Moral of the story, if your code works, is readable, and effective, for the majority of use cases, just let it stay the way it is. No need to obsess and get crazy about it unless you have a legitimate reason to do so. If I obsessed over every little detail, every stutter, every graphic, I would have never have gotten this video uploaded. So yeah, we're at the end of this video. We have a fully functioning web scraper that scrapes off from the literal pits of hell. If you do wish to try it out for yourself, you can check out my GitHub down below. But just remember to change the save directory for the images. But yeah, um, that's basically it. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know. And uh, subscribe for more. That's it. Thanks for watching.